welcome back to the Witch's Cauldron. My name is Paula. Um, this is the next video in my Wheel of the Year series, and this is for Litha or Midsummer. Um, Midsummer Litha um, is the summer solstice, and that's typically celebrated June 21st or anywhere from June 20th to the 22nd. Um, and that is the longest day of the year and the shortest amount of night. You have to think about, you know, we're really going into the throes of summer. It's getting hot. Oh, by the way, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's in December, okay? Because it's flip-flopped from the Northern Hemisphere. The references that I make in this video are primarily toward the northern hemisphere timing okay so we're going into the summer okay um and this is on at the summer solstice that is the god at his peak of power okay because from here on out the days start getting shorter and the nights are getting longer until we get to yule which is the shortest day of the year and the longest night the god is then reborn and we start he starts gaining in strength until midsummer the following year it's that circle okay that cycle so what do you think about um the the god is in his full power the goddess are our plantings that we had put out are starting now. Some of the earlier crops are starting to come in and bear fruit, depending on where you are. Um, and there, the, the trees are in full leaf. Um, fruit trees, you can start really seeing like, you know, apples getting bigger in the tree. Um, so, this is in anticipation of the big harvest festivals to come. The harvest festivals, there are some traditions say two, others say three. I say three. And the harvest fe festivals are Lamas or Lunasa, Mabon, and Samhain. Um, so we're really there is also a focus on the element of fire because we're going into the fiery days of summer it's in honor of the the sun and the god um and it's also giving recognition to the horned god and all the forest and animals and wildlife okay so we we pause just a minute to really take in and pray for that abundance of the crops to sustain us and things to come to sustain us through the coming winter and the coming cold months okay so ancient some of the traditions that ancient pagans had um included torchlight processions um and bonfires that stood to ritually uh, strengthen the sun. Um, so there were also some traditions where um, they would light a big wheel on fire and then roll it down into the creek. That, you know, one was to like fend off a drought um, so that there would be enough water for the cro crops to be fruitful. Um, but you know, it's also a time to the need of the balance between fire, the heat of the day, and water, you know, to make the plants grow and sustain life and, you know, be able to sustain uh, the animals that were born in the spring, okay? So, typical things that are affiliated with mid Midsummer and Litha. Um, the it is ruled by the sun um and its season is of course summer um the time of day when you want to do your ritual is at midday at noon this is when the god is the strongest 
you know, the sun is strong in the sky, this is when you want to do your litha ritual, if at all possible. Um, the element affiliated with it is fire. Colors are blue, gold, green, red. Um, trees are the beech, the elder, holly, laurel, linden, and oak. Remember right now that the oak king is in power, but he will be unseated at the summer solstice by the holly king who will take over until um, Yule. Okay. We also have plants like mistletoe and saffron. Think about saffron, you know, in that, that bright golden color that it has. Herbs are chamomile, heather, heliotrope, lavender, St. John's wort, and vervain. Gemstones and minerals are diamonds, emeralds, jade, lapis lazuli, and tiger's eye. A lot, some of the goddesses that are affiliated with this are, um, one is Phoebe, and this is also a time that a lot of people do fairy magic. So it's also a good time to leave offerings out for the Fae, okay? The gods that are typically affiliated. Remember, this is more of a ritual, you know, this is, this is a ritual centered around the god, okay? So that would be Apollo, um, the Dagda, the Green Man, Helios, Jupiter, Loki, Luch, uh, Mithras, Ra, Thor, and Zeus. Those are some of the main ones. Animals that are affiliated with this um, Sabbat are cattle and horses. Um, birds are goldfinches, kingfishers, meadowlark, owls, robins, and wrens. And then the intent or issues that you typically work with at Litha or Midsummer are agriculture, change, uh, di divination, endings, fertility, life, light, manifestation, power, uh, purpose, strength, success, and unity. So what you can do, like, you know, your very common activities are gathering summer flowers and making like the head circlets out of the summer fla flowers, the crown of flowers, decorating your altar with those summer flowers, um, particularly like um, daisies, or if you happen to have Roman chamomile, lavender growing in your garden, um, things of that nature. Put those on your altar. Um, set the intent. It's also a good time for mead, for summer wine, um, or making mead. Um, that's another, you know, ritual. Your meals, you know, can have summer, early summer based you know, vegetables, like you might have some early corn. Um, you could have various kinds of greens, like lettuces and things like that, that come in very early. Um, so just think about that as you're doing things. You can incorporate magic from this time of year, you know, into your meals through kitchen witchery and the use of, you know, various herbs. But, you know, your ritual to the God should be done at midday or while the sun is still up. Where, you know, most of the time our rituals we think of, you know, at night and stuff. This is one that you really want to do when the sun is still up and still, you know, valid. And then in the evening, you know, it's very common for me to go out and build a fire in my fire pit. Even though it's probably 100 degrees 
and 100% humidity here in Virginia <laughs> at the summer solstice, um, you know, I go out and I do a fire in my fire pit to represent the strengthening of the sun to try and, you know, provide the extra to provide a little bit extra and strength to the God, you know, for the coming months. So there we have it. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's midsummer is also a time of Re, rites of rededication, rededication to the God and goddess, to the path that you have chosen. Um, it's also a great time for di divination regarding love and romance. Um, you want to try and keep one candle lit throughout the day to honor the sun, okay, to honor the God. And, you know, don't leave them un unattended. If you leave the house, don't leave a candle unattended, please. Um, but you also want to maybe pack a picnic lunch, okay? Go out and have that picnic lunch as, you know, the, the cakes and ale portion of your ritual. Um, you want to kind of bask in the sunlight for a little bit. Eat those fresh fruits. Eat those fresh vegetables. Um, if you haven't grown them yourself, preferably, you know, from a farmer's market or something like that. I happen to have um, a great farmer's market in my city. And I also have a large um, Mennonite farm. Um, just a few miles down the road that they put, you know, all their wares and stuff up for sale, as well as, you know, fresh meats from uh, the Mennonites. And that's also where I get my um, ground grain and things like that for making breads. Um, it's also embracing the masculine energy in your life the things those masculine energy things to to become more um let's say more self-confident some strength courage you know some of those typically affiliated with a masculine trait um i'm not going to say that they are masculine but they're typically affiliated I, i'm you know it's also a really really good time and I it it's also another time that is typical other than Beltane for hand fasting in the in the um, pagan community so it's a good time for that um, and as I said it's also a good time to leave offerings for the Fae and that would include um, you know fresh cream honey fresh butter that's not salted, um, anything that's really sweet, um, also shiny things like coins or, you know, something of that nature. I usually leave dimes out for the Fae that are brand new, that are nice and shiny. Um, so those are also activities that you can do for midsummer. Um, so with that, my friends, that is it for Midsummer Orlitha. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to subscribe before you leave. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. How do you plan on spending your Midsummer or your Litha? Um, and what are some of the traditions that you do for this Sabbat? So let me know down in the comments, everybody. And as usual, merry we did meet, merry we will part until we merry meet again. Be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye.